Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Confident as we are always and everywhere in the mercy of our God, we take a moment to call to mind our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow 
and con constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. Theirs the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. Theirs the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God, blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for his word. Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. And after he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. Peter got out of the boat, began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. Beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hands and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And after they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did an homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. You know, I've been told by countless people in my life that I am the only person in America who does not know how to swim. It's legit, I never learned, I don't know how to swim. So all my life, this gospel, I hear our Lord send his loved ones out into a boat, and he goes up to the mountain to do something, huh? Sends them out onto the water. Like, what are you doing? Where are you going? Why out the I get what's happening but they're on the water. That would have freaked me out just by itself, just being on the water, knowing that the Lord is on the land doing something up a mountain. But again, out on the water, and things start to get rough. It's almost as if Jesus abandoned them, right? Things get rough, and where is he? In a moment, he's right there with them, coming out to them, and that freaks them out as well, right? And St. Peter saying, Lord, is that you? Is that you? If it is, tell me to come out on the water, because he knows Jesus has subjective power over everything. Everything is subject to him. And I don't know, if Jesus said to me, yeah, get out of the boat, step on the water, I would have had a pause. I would have had a lot of pauses. I would have been thinking about life jackets. I would have been thinking about those floaty things that you put on your arms. I would have been thinking about the noodles. I don't know if I would have stepped on the water. Hopefully I would have. He steps on the water, so confident is he, in the person of Jesus Christ. 
out on the water, walking to meet his Lord. Then the wind freaks him out, right? And he starts to doubt. Like, is this actually going to work out okay, right? All the sympathy in the world for St. Peter there. And he starts to sink. And what happens? Jesus Christ comes and grabs him and pulls him up, even after he begins, begins to doubt and gets afraid. When I was young, I played baseball, little league and all the rest of it. I was a pitcher and I was shortstop. So one day, I was having a really bad day and I was pitching. And so I lobbed this thing and the kid hits it, but I was in such a bad mood, I didn't care. And the ball kind of almost comes right at me, but just off to the side. And I just stand there, I didn't care, and I just went like this. Ball straight into the glove. I caught it. And everyone cheered. And I looked like the coolest kid in the neighborhood that day. But it wasn't because I cared. It just happened. There was another game. This is what happened. I was batting. I hit this ball so beautifully and cleanly. It went so far. Nobody got it. They all had to go chasing after it. I ran and ran and ran. I hit first base, ran and ran and ran. I hit second base, ran and ran and ran. I hit third base, and I ran and I ran and I ran. I really wanted to get the home base, and I was just about there. My right, hook, my right foot hooked around my left foot, and I go crashing to the ground, but I slide on my chest and my face and the dirt, everything, right into home base as the other kid hits me on the back with the ball, right? Referee, umpire rather, sorry declares me safe, and that won the game. So again, another opportunity of being the coolest kid on the block. It was about me, but it wasn't about me. Nobody knew that I tripped. They thought I did that on purpose. I looked like an all-star sliding into that thing, right? But I knew in my head, I tripped, but I still made it. It was due to me being there and running, but something else took over, it happened. Had I not been there with my glove out like this, that ball never would have gone in there. Had I not been there, sliding into home base, right? Had I not been there, that never would have happened. And I had these glorious experiences of being, being a cool kid for a little bit, right? What's the point of all this? It's about me, but it's not about me, right? St. Peter, it was about him, but it wasn't about him. It's about the mercy and love of God who never, ever, 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 ever abandons us. And I know, I know, at times it can feel like he's up on the mountain and we're down on the lake and it's jumping all around. This pandemic and everything else going on, right? But he never, ever, ever abandons us. And I, sometimes it can sound a bit condescending, you know, for example, for a rich person to tell a poor person to trust in God, it's a bit easy, right? For somebody, a priest or whomever to say, trust in God even when times are wicked tough. It can sound condescending. But that is what we hold on to because it's not about me, it's not about my words, right? It's about Jesus Christ. And last line of the gospel, truly, you are the son of God. That's why we do everything we do in good times and bad, all of it. And I know all of you participating in this mass at home have your joys, your hopes, your sorrows, your pains, and all the rest of it. I have all mine as well. All of us here, we all have it but we are united in him, through him, with him, and for him. For Jesus Christ is the son of the living God, and he's pulling us ever closer and closer and closer to himself for all eternity. And one day, this will all, this will all make sense. I know I've said to people a thousand times over, by the mercy and grace of God, when I'm with our Lord, when I'm with the Trinity, with everybody up there, with the Blessed Mother even, I'm gonna have a thousand questions about life, why did certain things have to be they were, the, the way they were, right? Including this pandemic and all the rest of it. We're going to have eternal conversations about how God has made all of this work out for the good of those who love God, love one another. We are about the glory of God, the good of our souls, and the good of every one of our brothers and sisters, for we are followers of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I bless you all so very, very much. And as we have done for countless centuries, we take yet another opportunity to proclaim the faith of Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. And for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that in every way our Lord is always attentive to our prayers, we continue to pray. For the church, that like Peter, she would keep her eyes fixed on Jesus, resisting the urge to rely on her own pride and aching need for primacy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. For Catholics everywhere, that they might have a renewed sense of awe at the riches of the Church's teachings on social justice and the dignity of all human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all Christians seeking a deeper relationship with God, that they would seek it in silence and in the still small voice of mercy and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For parents anxiously weighing the choices for their children's schooling this academic year in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, may they trust in the Lord's plans for their children. May they rest in the knowledge God has placed them in their capable hands for his glory and that the depth of his love for their children is beyond even what the best parent could fathom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For the physical, emotional, emotional and spiritual healing of this nation, may kindness and truth meet, justice and peace kiss, and truth spring up from the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty Father, you constantly draw us closer and closer to one another and closer and closer to yourself. We ask you to graciously hear us and answer us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good, good of all his holy church. 
Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself by the blood of his cross, brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him, he has become the source of eternal salvation. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end together we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Sean Patrick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I just want to make a couple of mentions that if any of you who uh, heard that homily make mention to anybody who I played baseball with back in the day that that home run, uh, that, home, that slide into home base was an accident. I will lie and lie and lie and deny, 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 okay? I was the coolest kid that day. It was so great. I need to hold on to something. <laughs> and please also know that there are so many things happening here at the parish of St. Paul as well as St. John, of course, in our collaborative here. So do check out our website. Uh, check out the bulletin. We still have bu bulletins here at the parish. You can always come by and collect one should you like and that sort of thing. Um, God bless you all so much. You're all in our thoughts and in our prayers. The Mass is the, the Lord be with you, rather. And with your spirit. <laughs> the Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.